Thomas M. Dyke has retired. This episode of the Silent Service is a story of one of the little-known operations of our submarines during World War II, the mine planting mission. Even under ideal circumstances, laying mines off an enemy harbor is a hazardous undertaking. This story is based on a patrol of the USS Crivalli in the Indochina area, where she found herself menaced by her own mines. That she survived it all is a tribute to the courage of her ship's company. Pearl Harbor, command headquarters of the submarine force Pacific Fleet. In January 1944, the captain of the Crivalli, Commander Henry G. Munson of Alexandria, Virginia, reported to the operations officer of the submarine force for his next assignment was to be the Crivalli's second war patrol, and it came very close to being her last. For 36 mines to be laid in an S-curve across the mouth of the Saigon River, beginning in shallow water here. How much water will I have under my keel? It's a surface operation, Hank. If I have to dive, 20 feet. I've been in deeper swimming pools. How well is the area patrolled? Bound to be anti-submarine vessels around. And you will be within range of the shore battery of Cape St. John. On the other hand, the bay will be full of fishing boats. I wonder if anyone could mistake the Crivalli for a sampan. Won't be too risky if you get out before the moon rises. That'll be at 2300. If you're on station just after sunset, you'll have three hours for the operation. Carry it mighty thin, you know, even if everything goes right. I know. It's a tough one. But Saigon is the largest Japanese supply port on the Indochina coast. We've got to cork it up. If I have to shoot my way out, what will I have, sir? Torpedoes. In two tubes, forward. Well, that's something. And a deck gun. Uh-huh. There's an alternative plan. If you can't get into Cape St. Jacques, plant your mines in deeper water outside the river mouth. That wouldn't be very effective. See, once those ships are out of the river, they fan out and go everywhere. No, if I can't put them where they'll do some good, I might as well haul them on the Fremantle with us. Well, if you can't get into the river... Oh, we'll get in. Don't worry about that. I thought you would. I know you did. For the next few days, the crew of the Crivalli were given a thorough indoctrination in the handling and procedure of mine laying. When 16 torpedoes and enough supplies for an extended patrol were added, there was barely room to move in the crowded torpedo room. If you got any more up there, we're gonna have to tow them behind us. Last one. All right, you guys, make room for another one and see to what it's secure. These babies ain't garbage cans. Hey, Wilson, you went to mine school. Any chance of these things going off accidentally? Nah, there's a little wafer in them that has to dissolve before they can go off. Takes 45 minutes in the water to do it. Yeah, well, I'd hate to run into one of them. You don't have to run into them, stupid. These are magnetic mines. All the ship has to do is pass over one of them and whammo! Just like a torpedo. Hey, Wilson, how come you went to mine school? He's striking for chief, that's how come. He took a course in changing diapers if it would help any. Yeah, they ought to make him a chief. He's not built right for these sailor suits. <laughs> All right, you guys. Stow that thing away someplace. And watch what you're doing. That timing gear gets fouled up. It's liable to go off any time. Hey, Dempster, you busy? Oh, of course not. It's just a hobby. How about doing me a favor? I did you one last time we were in port. Didn't give me no extra day at the Royal Hawaiian. I cut you in on something else pretty good, didn't I? Yeah. Now what do I have to do for it? Well, you know that course I took in mines? Yeah. How about entering it in my record right away? Here's a copy of the certificate signed by Mr. Rue. I put that in last week. Yeah? Well, that's all the courses I need for chief, right? Well, how would I know without checking your record? Here. Go read your mail. Let me get some work done around here. Oh, 
Oh, ballast. Here comes the whale. Lay off, will you? What I don't understand is how can a guy get so fat on patrol? My wife keeps sending me these homemade cakes. Half the torpedo room's fully loaded. All the mines are secured, sir. Very well. What took you so long? We've been securing a forward room for an hour. You didn't get as many as we did. We got them stacked up to the vents. Where are we going to lay them, sir? I don't know yet. Captain just came aboard. We're taking on extra ammo, so you can bet it'll be close in the shore somewhere. Mine plant's no good in the middle of the ocean. Mr. Rowe, Captain would like to see you in the water room. Very well, thank you. Keep that ammunition moving. That's what I like. Gun action. You'd better give me that cake before you get stuck in the hatch. Going on a diet anyway. <laughs> Gravali slipped quietly out of Pearl Harbor. It would be many weeks before she and her crew would see this port again. Nine days later, the Crivalli entered enemy waters. Lookouts were doubled. Every measure was taken to avoid contact. A submarine's greatest weapon is the element of surprise. On a night surface operation in less than 50 feet of water and within range of a shore battery, it was imperative that the Crivalli remain undetected. I'll take the watch, Bill, get some sleep. We should be off the Cape by dusk. I'd like to inspect those mines again, Captain. Where we got them stowed, anything could happen. It's a good idea. And ask Mr. Walker to come to the bridge. Aye, sir. Keep a good lookout for aircraft. I want those mines unloaded in the river, not out in deep water. Yes, sir. We can't get rid of them fast enough to suit me. You wanted me, Captain? It'll be mostly you or show tonight, Frank. How do you feel about the shallow water? Well, the river current might give us some trouble. But it's a strong one, could throw us off as much as an hour. We don't have that much leeway with Moonrise at 2300. By midnight, it'll be full and bright. We should start the mine plant off Cape St. Jacques no later than 2100. If we could make a high-speed run on the surface, Captain, it might minimize the error. That's what I figure to do. Once we're in the shallows, we've got to pass for a sampan. Those fishing boats should give us lots of protection from radar. Yeah. Unless some of them are rigged for anti-sub work. That's a cheerful thought. Radar contact, bogey at 22 miles. Bearing 133. Oh, he's closing fast. Aircraft, broad on the starboard bow. Clear the bridge. Dive, dive. All ahead, two thirds. Let forward trim from sea. Level off at 60 feet. Steady on course 240. Steady on course 240, sir. Final trim, sir, 60 feet. He didn't spot it. Patrol plane, continuing towards coast. I was afraid our luck would run out. We'll never hit our position on time running submerged. Radar depth, raise SV antenna. Sweet, maximum range submerged. Trim at 55 feet, sir. Very well. Maximum range 30 miles, all clear, sir. Very well. Stand by the surface. Steady on her course and at full speed, Cravalli tried to make up the time she had lost while submerged. Twice more she was forced under by threatening aircraft. Each time she returned to the surface and resumed her course for the Indochina coast. Just after sunset, Cravalli made her final high-speed run towards her goal. But it was 10.45 before she approached her assignment area. We'll have to take our chances with the current from here in. Well, we're right on course so far. This is plot. 25 feet under the keel, Captain. We'll arrive at mine plant position in 20 minutes. Have gun crew stand by. How does it look, radar? About the same, sir. Must be 25 fishing boats out there. None are closing, though. Very well. Watch them closely. Moon should be up in about 15 minutes. I'd be happier if we were an hour earlier. 
and a hundred feet more of water. Wouldn't hurt, Captain. Everything ready below? Yes, sir. Forward and aft torpedo rooms of mines ready to load. What's that smell? It's like a barnyard. Could be. We're close enough in for them to smell us. Current's increasing, sir. Should steer a course five degrees to the left to compensate. Come left to 320, helmsman. Coming left. 320. 22 feet under the keel, sir. Raise the sound head. All ahead, one third. Give me a bearing and range on that point of land. Bearing 325. Range 4000, sir. We'll be at the starting point in 10 minutes, Captain. Very well. Sound general quarters. Battle station. Gun action. Battle station. Gun action. Gun crews on deck. Won't be long now. Make ready the two. All right, man. Make ready. Periscope watch can see the fort. We're only a mile offshore. What do you want, a fast liberty? What's the matter with you? I feel sick. Well, me too. But hold it for an hour, will you? Then you can get as sick as you like. Tubes ready, both forward and aft. Stand by to commence mine plan. Aye, aye, sir. Radar's picked up a new contact. Looks like a good-sized ship coming out of the river channel. How much time to go? One minute, sir. Tell the tracking party to keep a close watch on that ship. Aye, aye, sir. Sampan dead ahead, sir. Right, full rudder. All ahead, standard. Right, full rudder. All ahead, standard. Walker, your bright full moon is coming up over the mountains. Bring her to one, two, zero. Steer a steady course. Bring her to one, two, zero and steer a steady course. Open outer doors. Open outer doors, aye, aye. Open outer doors. Forward doors open, sir. Outer doors open, Captain. Commence mine plant. Stand by four and a half. Stand by four and a half. Fire one, fire seven. Fire one, fire seven. Number one and number seven fired electrically, sir. Fire two, fire eight. Fire two, fire eight. Number two, number eight fire, sir. He's coming this way. Fire three, fire nine. Fire three, fire nine. Captain, that ship's closing on us. His range is 6,000 yards to the starboard quarter. Moving very slow. Very well. Number three fired. Number nine fi Number nine failed to leave the tube, sir. Number nine was fired, but the mine was jammed in the outer door, sir. Cease firing! Secure the mine plant! Left full rudder. Take the bridge for anchor circle. Clear that ship and bring us back to safe position. Keep him on radar. If his speed increases, sing out loud and clear. <laughs> Secure all watertight doors, four and aft. Aye, sir. She's as close as she'll go. Now bet the two. Can you get it out of there, Wilson? Well, the outer door's not fully closed, but we can open the inner door. Drain shows little water. All right, open her up. Stand by to reload number seven, boys. Had a good soaking since firing. That wafer's probably dissolving in there right now. We've got no more than 30 minutes to get it out of here. 
Mr. Walker reports we're back at original course, sir. Approaching previous position. Slow to steerageway speed. Slow to steerageway speed. Mechanisms all smash. If told us a mining school, the least little jog can set it off. Well, they told you right. They show you how to disarm one. Yeah. I never tried it with a life. I can try, sir. Well, that's all I can ask. Clear the after room. Pass the word. All unnecessary hands move forward. Make the ship watertight. All unnecessary hands move forward. Make the ship watertight. Carry on, Wilson. Take it slow. You'll do fine. Captain. I'll stand by here with Wilson. You'll be needed on the bridge. All right, Bill. We've got 25 minutes, Wilson. And you'll be a chief. A shark bait. This one's coming out okay. But I think a couple of strip. Try the other one. Aye, aye, sir. Still closing? Yes, sir. Slowly. Hasn't seen us then. Destroyer, all right. He'll be on top of us in a few minutes. How are you doing back there? I think we're getting there. Well, fine. Now, don't hurry, but try and get there within the next five minutes. There's some activity at the fort, sir. I see some light. Captain, we're back on approach course. We're over our own mines. If we go around this circle again, they'll be armed when we get back. The Kravali was fast running out of space. To proceed on the same circular course invited destruction from one of our own magnetic mines. The enemy destroyer was getting closer. The damaged mine in the tube threatened to detonate at any second. But with half of the mines still on board, Captain Munson was unwilling to abandon the operation. All stop. And everybody pray that destroyer thinks we're a sampan. Patrol boat dead astern. It's sending signals, sir. I'm the fall, Mr. Rowe. You better cover your ears. What was that about covering my ears? Well, if the thing had gone off, it would have busted your eardrums. Captain, radar shows the destroyer's veering away. She must think we're a fishing boat. Resume the mine plan. Resume the mine plan. All ahead, one third. Steady on one, two, zero. All ahead, one third. Steady on one, two, zero. Open out her doors. Stand by, forward. Let's get it done. Fourteen days later, the Krivali completed her patrol and headed for Freeman. 
He was hauling neither torpedoes nor mines now. Four of those torpedoes had sunk enemy ships. As a result of the mine laying operation, at least two more freighters had gone down and two were damaged. For this patrol, the Krivali received the Navy unit commendation. Hi, Wilson. What's the trouble? You've been dragging around like you lost a liberty or something. Must be that diet he's on. You can see he's just skin and bones. No, that's not it. Don't look like I'm gonna make chief after all. Captain promised me. If he said it, he'll do it. He's just waiting till we get into Fremantle. Yeah, you think that's it? Ah, oh, you're a cinch. If that is, if the old man doesn't bust you for fouling up that mine in the first place. When Crivalli left Fremantle on the next patrol, Captain Munson had been transferred and her executive officer had moved up to command. In the press of a wartime change of command, the captain had taken it for granted that his other officers knew of his promise. No one did. The man who had promised to move Wilson up to chief was no longer aboard. For the rest of the war, Wilson remained a torpedo. Following the end of the war, he was transferred to the submarine school at New London, Connecticut. The officer in charge was none other than his old skipper, Captain Munson. I don't know how it happened, Wilson. Everything was hectic in those days. But don't worry about it anymore. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, sir. But now that the war is over, papers don't clear very fast. I've got to make chief by tomorrow. Why tomorrow? After all this delay, I, I don't see how a few more days could really matter. Yes, it can, Captain. You see, my hometown is 50 miles from here, and they're having a big parade tomorrow, and I'm expected to march in it. But you see, I just can't march in that parade. My stomach's sticking out, and my wife and boy watching. You understand how it is, sir? By any chance, does your family uh, think you are a chief? Well, I guess they got that idea some way. I don't know how to explain it, sir. I guess it's like if you had to haul those mines to Fremantle instead of laying them. Yes, I know what you mean. Will you uh, step into the next office for a few minutes? Yes, sir. Lieutenant Harvey, will you come to my office? Personnel, I want you to make a one-day transfer to make an opening for a chief torpedo man. Harvey? I want you to get two more officers. I'm appointing you as a board to give a chief torpedo man's exam. I want it done right away, today. Now, naturally, it's to be in accordance with bureau instructions. However, the question should be of this nature. Uh, what type of vessel can submerge and travel underwater? I think you get the idea. They're having a parade in his hometown tomorrow, and he's going to be leading it as a chief. Take it from me. Wilson rates it. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. The USS Crivalli's mine plant patrol was one of the many special missions carried out by our submarine force during World War II, which contributed so greatly to the final destruction of the enemy. We are pleased in having with us the man who served as the executive officer of the Crivalli on her mine planting mission and later became her skipper, Captain Frank Walker. Frank, this mine laying business is something I'm glad I never had to do. Yes, even from this distance, it's impossible to remember anything pleasant about it. I understand that the field you laid turned out to be well worth the trouble. We did learn several years later that some ships, including one large merchantman, had stumbled into the field with disastrous results. Your ex-skipper tells me that you hadn't had enough excitement, so you picked a gunfight with an anti-submarine vessel on the way home. That was an Alice Channel in the Sulu Archipelago. When we surfaced and started firing, he tried to get away until he saw he couldn't outrun us. Then he turned and charged right at us. Pretty brave fellow. Yes, but he didn't last long. One of our five-inch shells landed in his depth charges and the ship just disappeared. The enemy never knew what became of him. Frank, you certainly had some interesting times in the Crivalli, and I want to thank you for telling us about some of them. It's been a real pleasure. Please be with us again for another exciting story of the silent service. Take her down the mountain line Through the deep blue underneath the ocean We'll control the ocean
ocean wide, from down, down underneath the sea. Take the course for past the world, in the future's yet to be. That will say, as long as there's a submarine underneath the sea. So wait for dive and take the dive. Go down, down, underneath the ocean, fearless man will find me down, in the deep blue, underneath the sea.